Let's have a lesson and discussion on this piece. Uh, follow the lesson for free and pick up some tips about the style of music, but if you're interested, I do have a sheet music edition of this work. It's part of my Gaspar Sands collection, Volume 2, which is a collection of works. And there's a link for that sheet music in the description. So the first thing you want to know about this piece is that it's based on a very famous chord progression. And this chord progression has been used by hundreds of composers throughout the ages, all the way from the early Baroque, late Renaissance, all the way to today. So major composers have used it for um, uh, theme and variations, uh, and just also just smaller works based on the piece. So that's very important. And when we take all the notes from each measure, it's pretty easy to see what, what that chord progression is. We have D minor, A major, D minor, C major, F major, C major, D minor, A major, D minor, A major, D minor, C major, F, C, and then D, and like an A, a cadence. And then a series of variations on that theme. And that's what's happening here. So one thing we can always do when we have a theme and variations is just compare the opening theme to all the other variations. So we have one, two, three sets of variations here. So if we take the first four measures of the theme, and we compare it to the first four measures of each variation, that can be very helpful to us to just hear the theme and to see what the composer is doing. So if we take just the first four measures, for example, and then we compare it to the variations, we can see what he's doing. So same chords, um, but he's playing around with the notes more, right? Let's play that first, the opening theme again. Let's play the next variation. So you can see again, same chord progression, uh, but he's doing something different. And it, let's play that first theme again. Final variation. So you can see there he's just, he's running through the notes more quickly, but it's the same chord progression each time. So just making sure that you know that, and uh, because that's, a, that's the playful nature of, of a theme and variations. So you can compare all of that. Now, the piece can be um, quite challenging or quite easy depending on your approach. If you add all the ornamentation in this piece, it can be quite challenging. Some of the ornamentation happens in very close proximity to other ones, making it a bit of a handful and make it will ensure that you have to know the piece really well and keep those ornaments clean and just be prepared for them. But if you reduce the ornamentation, to just a limited amount, the piece can be quite easy. It mostly is played in first position. Um, there won't be too much challenge to it. So uh, I encourage students to probably learn the piece without much ornamentation at all. You can just add one or two at the ends of the sections. Just a, like a little trill here and there. Um, once you have the piece under control and performable, uh, you can start um, adding more ornamentation and make it more challenging if you wish, but you certainly don't have to. So it's just one of those things where the, the music itself is relatively easy, but in terms of performance practice, um, a professional musician can make it as challenging as they want uh, by adding all that ornamentation. And certainly the, the final variation even has a marking saying like this variation runs, so probably more quickly, uh, but that's all up to you depending on the tempo that you choose. So 
I think we'll go through the piece now. There's going to be lots to discuss in terms of the ornamentation. So let me just first describe a couple things about the ornaments and then um, I, I don't want to repeat myself uh, showing you exactly what I do a hundred times, uh, but I'll give you a, an outline here. The trills can be played um, either from the written note or from the note above. In this particular piece, um, it just happens to occur a lot of the time that the note before an ornament is the upper auxiliary. So I tend to, to start from that upper auxiliary to create a suspension over the bar. So it's up to you though. With all the trills, you could play them from the written note, like that measure two ornament. So C sharp, D, C sharp, or you could play D, C sharp, D sharp, sorry, D, C, D, C sharp. It's up to you. Um, I would recommend that um, in general, you can just play uh, most of them starting on the upper auxiliary in this particular piece because it works out that way. But either one is acceptable. The only time I would make sure you actually play from the upper auxiliary is at a real strong cadence. So at the end of a section, like at measure 15 there, when you have a cadence, it's nice to start from that upper auxiliary to create some tension on the beat and then resolve. Um, the unmarked ornaments, which I've just used a short trill symbol for, uh, I would do all of those as mordants in this piece just for contrast to to the um, large amount of trills. So whenever you see an unmarked ornament, um, I would just play it as a mordant. So for example, in measure uh, 17 there, you, that first one, so F, E, F, and then trill, B flat, A, B flat, so all those unmarked ornaments as mordants, so going to the note below. That's about it. The VIB is, is vibrato. Um, in this time period, the vibrato was probably considered kind of a modulating um, ornament, almost like a trill. On the modern guitar, I find that has varied results, so I'm pretty subtle with it. I don't over overdo it too much. You can leave them out if you wish, or just do a little bit of vibrato. It's up to you. And then any ornaments in parentheses, those are just added by me, um, just so um, if someone wants to just do what I did in the video, they can, they can do that. But you can leave them out. The rest of the ornaments are in the original manuscript. Okay, let's go through the piece and we'll just talk about a few things. I'll discuss the ornaments a little bit, but not too much. those trills I'm starting from the note above. Not this one though, just it's mid phrase, it doesn't need it. Uh, and here, I do a hinge bar, so I play that C with a, with a bar, but not letting the upper part of the bar touch the strings because we need to open D here, and then I close it there. Again, bar six, hinge bar, You don't have to do that hinge bar if it gives you trouble. Um, it's not necessary. Uh, you could do it. Just jump the finger over, jump one down. You lose a little bit of sustain on the upper notes that way, but that's okay. It's not noticeable. It's not very noticeable. So feel free to just ignore the bars there and just jump your finger over if that's what you prefer to do. So in, in this section, the ornaments, you know, they're in very close proximity. So if you're more on the early intermediate level, um, feel free to just leave out some of those. You could just do the first one on the measure if you wanted. That would make it much easier. And in, you know, 
In performance, I think a lot of people would probably just reduce the ornaments a lot. It's a bit much adding so much. I kind of like it these days. It's kind of like a fun, um, frilly kind of um, aspect of the piece that I, I quite like. Uh, and if you can clean your ornaments up and make them small and crisp, uh, you can do that without too much interference of the actual notes of the piece. But like I said, reduce it if you want, or you could even leave them out entirely. It's completely up to you. the most challenging um, variation just because of the ornaments but again if you reduce it it's so much easier I'm um, going on to the next variation he kind of simplifies the texture here which is really really cool because uh, you get a simple kind of theme you get a highly ornamented thicker uh, theme and then we go back to simple here I'm doing most of these ornaments just from the written note to the upper note All the slurs in this piece are all editorial. I've added those in, so uh, feel free to use them or not use them. Completely up to you. I find they help with the legato a little bit. Now, this last variation has a little uh, text note in the original that says this variation runs. So uh, I'm assuming that that would mean quickly. So this variation goes quicker, or at least more exciting. So I pick up the tempo here. I do it with a little bit of uh, rubato, but not so much sense in the romantic sense, but like just get the ball rolling and then keep it rolling. And then at the, you know, halfway through mark uh, where it cadences, I back off a little bit, but we'll, we'll show that. <laughs> there and then 57 it starts again back off a little bit really fun piece lots of opportunity to make it um, interesting and challenging and 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 to to try out your performance practice with the piece in terms of like adding ornaments and other things. But if you want to keep it simple, it also sounds really great with much less ornamentation. Uh, so making it a, a really just one of those wonderful pieces that students and pros can play alike and, uh, and get so much out of the piece. <laughs> 